All right, everybody. I know I'm the last uh, presenter here, so, um, so I'll hopefully make this entertaining. Uh, so the topic uh, <clears throat> that I want to talk about um, for the next half hour or so is something called the consumerization of mobility. Um, now, when you think about that, what do you think about when I say the consumerization of mobility? Do you think it's uh, you know, going to be everywhere? Do you think it's consumers will be able to integrate it or operate it? Um, you know, every, everything that everyone has said today um, and will say tomorrow is we're doing software, we're doing network function virtualization, we're doing software-defined networking, but why are we doing it, right? No one has talked about, you know, is that really solving the problem for the industry? The problem in the industry is mobile data, mobile video, especially video, has grown tremendously that the cost per gigabit associated with mobile video on the wireless networks is becoming cost prohibitive, right? What's happening in the industry is mobile data is growing and growing and growing, mobile video is growing and growing. In the industry, the mobile network operators are offloading as much as they can off of their network to Wi-Fi. So the fact is the mobile network in industry and the operators have failed with managed spectrum. When you think about it, for 2G, 3G, it was good. For 4G and LTE, they got to you know, take everything off their licensed spectrum and unload it to, to unlicensed spectrum. So are you a licensed spectrum operator or are you an un unlicensed spectrum operator? Is licensed, licensed spectrum valuable or is it not really valuable? <clears throat> and you're seeing Wi-Fi now come up. A lot of the MSOs are deploying um, you know, metropolitan Wi-Fi um, just to have Xfinity and you know, um, Time Warner cable content available to you when you're not in your home. And you're starting to see all these other you know, networking technologies rise up when it should be managed spectrum and mobile network operators that should be supporting it all. The problem is every gigabit of mobile video traffic and mobile data traffic on LTE erodes margin in the industry. Nobody really wants to talk about it, but it's a margin erosion business. The costs are too high. The way that the networks have been engineered aren't, aren't, don't work for mobile video. They've failed, right? So we can talk about NFV, SDN, we can talk about virtualization, distrib distributed, and things like that, but is that really solving the problem? So I'd encourage us as a group that's trying to go after this, we need to quantify this in economic terms and say how much per gigabit, how much cost per gigabit are we reducing in, in the industry? Because some may say, some may argue this, and I'm a big proponent of SDN and NFV, obviously. I'm an IT guy, right? Um, but fundamentally, I don't know if it's going to make a difference, right? We have, to a we have to ask this question because we have to have an answer for it. But let me tell you this. Orchestration is very complicated. In a multi-vendor environment, you want to build an orchestration engine that's going to spin up virtual machines, put an MME or P gateway in there, and then route traffic to it, and then build all the BSS and OSS to support that. Some may sit on the other side of the fence and say, hey, that's not going to help, actually. You're going you're gonna to build, you're going to go through all this CapEx investment to build this stuff out, and you're not going to get the OpEx benefit. The networks are still architected the same way. So what? You have a centralized core, and now it's running on general purpose computing hardware. Is that going to make a difference? How much is that going to lower a cost per gigabit of traffic? If we don't know the answer to that, we better know the answer, right? How much is SDN or orchestration going to lower the cost per gigabit for mobile video? We've got to have answers to that, right? So what I'm going to just walk through a little story, right? And the story is, um, you know, we're, we're personally, myself and Lemco believes, managed spectrum and mobility solutions are going. So I'm going to just walk you through a little story and let you know where I think the future um, of mobility is going, but also how NFV and SDN really plays a role in that. Okay? The first thing I want to start out with is, um, are there any financial analysts in the room that kind of cover mobility besides you, Jim? <laughs> um, they've got it all wrong. How do financial analysts measure our industry today? Number of subscribers, ARPU, CPGA, churn, right? What is that? That's voice. Voice is dead. 
mobile data has already surpassed voice, right? But we have the analyst over here in this telecom 1.0 world still measuring every, every you know, earnings call for the carriers get up there and they say, oh, here's our RPU number of customers, blah, 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 but they're not measuring the right things. So if the financial analyst finally gets smart enough and know what's going on in the industry and look, and look at how to measure our industry, maybe we'll start to see some behavior changes in the carriers to try to get to those metrics a little bit more aggressively. What are the metrics? As a data dominant telecom 2.0 world, it should be what? Cost per gigabit? Maybe, right? It should be maybe profit per gigabit per megahertz pop. Are, are you monetizing your spectrum? Are you making profit on your spectrum? We don't even have a COGS in our industry, do we? I mean, look how immature wireless and telco is. What's our cost of goods sold? We don't have one, do we? What we've done is we've taken, you know, all of our cost in the industry and we're just offloading it all to the end consumer. And I'll talk about that in a minute, but you know, how much do we pay for mobile broadband today? You know, now that LTE's finally here, unlimited data went away <laughs> from a pricing perspective. Why is that? Right? The cost per gigabit for handling mobile video is too high. The, the operators in the industry can't get their cost per gigabit out low enough, so they're just pushing the cost to us as end consumers. And that's literally what's going on. So if we see, if the financial analysts really start to change the economic indicators and measurements, so on the next earning call for the carriers, I want to hear the financial analysts say, what's your, CP, what's your um, cost per gigabit, what's your profit per gigabit per, mega, per megahertz pop? Once the operators start man it, measuring themselves on that, then I think we'll see um, changes happen in the culture of the carriers where they'll start doing what we're talking about much more aggressively. So if they're measured on cost per gigabit and profit per gigabit per megahertz pop, I, I guarantee you SDN and NFE won't be in the trials and they won't be you know, talking all about it. I think there'll be a little bit more action. Okay? So I just wanted to provide that you know, kind of a little bit of an economic perspective. The other things you hear in the industry is, man, there's, you know, there's not enough spectrum, right? We don't, you know, we need more spectrum. And you'll hear it from Verizon, AT&T, every carrier, right? They all want more spectrum. Now let's talk about this a little bit. So what the carriers are um, you know, doing, obviously, is they're, you know, they're lobbying as much as they can. We are the only ones that can run managed spectrum solutions. It's too complicated. Nobody else can do it. We need all the spectrum, don't give it to anybody else. Meanwhile, on the other side of their mouth, they're offloading everything they can to Wi-Fi, unlicensed spectrum. So they say, hey, I want all the spectrum, give it to me, because I'm the only one that can operate it, but hey, you know, it's too costly for me, so I'm gonna offload everything I can to Wi-Fi. Why is that, right? It's because their cost, their cost to carry that traffic, it's cost prohibitive and it's eroding their margin. I can't think of any other reason to do it. Now they'll also say, oh, it's the laws of physics. Right? I'm at, you know, my, I have a physics degree, so I can talk about it a little bit. But it's the laws of physics, right? I can only get so many bits per hertz. It's not my problem. There's more bits, I need more hertz. But how many, you know, have, has LT been rolled out in rural areas? Has LT been rolled out in, in building? How many drop calls do we get? You know, how many dead zones are there where there's no coverage? So have they really monetized the spectrum that they have? Nope. Right? So, you know, it's, there needs to be um, spectrum made available for innovation, for mobility. Right? So if the FCC allocated 10, 20 megahertz of spectrum, just for, I'm not talking about garage door openers, I'm not talking about baby monitors and those things. I'm talking about spectrum available for mobility, managed spectrum mobility. Now, if, you, if, you did, if that was available, boy, I bet you NFE, SDN, all these orchestration things, boy, would that go through the roof, right? Because you wouldn't be dependent upon a carrier to roll out mobility. So that, that needs to really happen also to get um, you know, our kind of, what we're talking about here to market, right? So where are we today, right? So um, what, what, what has the industry done? 
right? The industry has, the mobile industry, has created a whole other internet just to get to the internet. <clears throat> Think about it. There's, um, you know, for us to, um, to go to the internet here, we plug in our laptop into the ethernet network and we're on the internet, right? For our mobile devices, we have to go to the cell tower, back to a centralized core, to then get to a P gateway to get to the internet. Does that add a lot of value? Do you care if you go through, does AT&T have a better P gateway than Verizon's P gateway? Is there any value in the core? Is there any value in the mobile packet core? No. I don't think there is. Do you get any value connecting to Wi-Fi versus the mobile network? I mean, most kids today, they have their iTouch and their iPad, iPod, and they do everything they can, you can do on that versus you can on a mobile device. So fundamentally, <clears throat> what we're saying here is this network was created for voice, and it was good for voice, but for data, people just want to get to the internet. This is actually the, the worst way you could engineer a wireless data network. It's, I, don't, I can't think of a more cost prohibitive way to design and engineer a mobile data network. I mean, you could probably figure out ways to add more cost to it, but I doubt it, really. It's a proprietary network, backhaul, you know, everything's backhauled on a proprietary layer two protocol. All this Cisco Juniper gear going to a mobile packet core or EPC with all this proprietary hardware software just to get to the internet. Yeah, we want to virtualize this. We want a software to find it. And we'll, we'll do that. But it's $10 a gigabit, right? And, you know, I'm just, that's just a number, right? But, you know, it's $10 a gigabit. Wireline economics is what? 15 cents a gigabit? So we need to get, we need to track all these technology things we're doing and get it down to the economic sense here, right? So the model's broken, and what are they doing, right? What, is the, what, are, what are we doing? So we're offloading everything we can to Wi-Fi to reduce the cost per gigabit. We're doing um, like byte mobile and video optimization for over the mobile networks to change the codec so less bytes are going back and forth. We're um, doing SDN, NFE, network orchestration. That's gonna get us from $10 a gigabit to what? Eight, maybe? Nine? Is it enough? Is it gonna move the needle? I don't think it is. It's not enough. These are putting Band-Aids on a patient that's in triage. Basically, you're not gonna fix the patient by putting Band-Aids on it, right? There's something dramatically needs to change, right? And, um, and, you know, it's, the economics will drive that, right? So what is, um, what is the marketplace saying, right? The marketplace is really saying there's no value in a mobile packet core, there's no value in an EPC, there's no value in a mobile packet core, there's no value in a mobile packet core, there is no value in a mobile packet core or an EPC. Everyone today, I mean, connects on Wi-Fi versus, uh, you know, managed spectrum. Do they get any value out of that? No. Right? Just costs more. It's sometimes faster, sometimes slower. Wi-Fi, as we all know, everyone uses, but it's a contention-based network. Wi-Fi is terrible. Only a certain number of people can use it, and if more people try to use it, it doesn't work. Um, consumers don't care about how they connect to the Internet through their mobile device. They just want to get to the Internet. Wi-Fi wi is free and good enough, um, and people are okay with it because it's cheap, relatively free. Um, how much value does the mobile carrier provide, um, especially when our costs are going up so high? What's happening in the industry is all the costs are being put on to you and I, and the innovation is not happening the way it should be. So maybe, um, and what, the, what I'm trying to say here is that the wireless technology needs to become more like fixed wireless, needs to become more like internet, right? So all of mobility needs to be re-engineered to be more like internet economics, right? And I think NFB and SDN are getting there, but it's still, it's not, it's not quite enough, right? So I think, you know, we could, we could take, learn a lesson, right? Let's learn a lesson. Um, personally, I think every, every CTO um, in the mobile industry 
you know, should really just take a step back and say, okay, what do I have here? What have I architected? Is it the right thing for the business? Is this gonna survive? All I've done is put 4G on top of 3G on top of 2G. And who's done that? The network equipment providers. 4G on top of 3G on top of 2G. Does that make sense? I mean, LTE would have been a perfect example of rolling that out in a different way where you could have had different economics, but we didn't do that. Now we created this big mess that we have to orchestrate and NFV and SDN and, you know, boy, that's difficult, right? So, um, the only reason why North America is ahead in LTE is because we have CDMA and we needed to do something. Right, but relatively speaking, we're behind. I mean, the cost for mobility in the US is the second highest in any market globally. I think South America is like $2 higher, but the rest of the world has mobility a lot cheaper. So are we innovative? Are we doing this the right way? Just North America perspective? Nope. Um, consumers hate their telcos. Actually, you know, when I was at IBM prior, we did a survey and we did a consumer survey and, I, and telecom operators were the, consumers hated them the most. <laughs> right above that was the bank, <laughs> right? So you kind of know where they sit, right? Um, but they trust them, but they don't, they don't get the value out of it, right? Um, and, uh, you know, consumers and devices rule the industry. I mean, it's a $2 trillion business. Network infrastructure that we're focused on is only a $200 million business, right? So the con the consumers and devices are winning, right? So we have to catch up. On the network infrastructure side, we need to catch up. We need to do some innovation. We need to really change the economics and dynamics of the way mobility works today. And you know, I won't you know, bore you with Moore's or Metcalf's law, but you know, there's a simple thing. The mobile industry should learn from um, the IT CIO. What has the IT CIO done? Virtualization, distributed databases, distributed computing, um, everything that we're trying to do now in the network. So maybe the next CTO should be the CIO. Maybe all CTOs should be fired and the CIO should just get the job. The other thing we should learn from is wireline. CDN and caching works great for wireline. That's not in the mobile network at all. So if we just took those two lessons learned in principles from IT, from a CIO, and from a wireline on CDN and caching and applied those principles, to the mobile network, boy, I bet our cost per gigabit would go down significantly. Right? You guys kind of see where I'm treading and heading? So what, so what, how do you do this, right? So, um, you know, if you had to recreate it all over again, how would you build the network, right? And what we've talked about is um, virtualizing the mobile packet core or the EPC. Everyone's talked about the MME, P gateway, S gateway, the HSS, the IMS core. That's in a centralized location. It's very difficult and hard. Only, the only people that can do it are you know, the network engineers and the carriers. Why don't we virtualize that, have it run on any hardware platform, and then distribute that all the way to the edge of the network and I don't want to get too technical. There's been enough technical slides up here today. But all this application signaling traffic, I mean, apps, internet apps are not engineered or built or designed for the RF network. They're actually very chatty. They're meant for like TCP IP networks, not for RF networks. So they cause a lot of problems with sig application signaling, which takes up all the RRU, BBU capacity. It uses spectrum it shouldn't be using. It drives a lot of cost. The numbers I heard is for every smartphone um, connected to a wireless network, it costs an operator a dollar per month of just unbillable control plane traffic. So if, a, if an operator has 50 million smartphones, every month it's a $50 million cost that they can't bill for. And it's all in this setup of GTP traffic from all the apps that are very chatty. So the Facebook guys, the Google guys, you know, the YouTube, et cetera, is all, you know, all these apps are generating this traffic. So what do they do with that? They can't bill for it, so they just embed it in their cost structures and pass it on to you and I. They haven't solved the problem. They're blaming the app guys. Oh, uh, you know, the, the RF network should have been engineered better. Someone's got to fix it, right? Because it's going to break. 
the cost can't keep going up for us as consumers and spectrums, you know, not being used efficiently and effectively and the cost per gigabit, the way that they've engineered the network, it's going to break. So the point here is virtualize it. Don't keep it centralized. Distribute it to the edge of the network um, so that what comes out of that is IP, TCP IP, any IP protocol. Um, enable peer-to-peer -peer communications. So the cell site should talk to one another. Right? If you have the whole mobile packet core in EPC virtualized, take that software and run it at the eNodeB. Why not? Put a CDN at the eNodeB if you need to. I mean, you can move it back further, but put a transparent cache there. There's no reason why if we, func if we virtualize the whole EPC, we can run it anywhere we want. First of all, let it run on any general purpose computing platform, right? IT, hardware, lowest cost general purpose computing, compute stuff, Linux x86 architecture, run it on a silicon chip. Why don't we have an EPC chip? We're working on it. I mean, we should have one. And then put it and distribute it at the eNodeB so that the eNodeB has the whole mobile packet core in the radio, and you just plug it into the internet, and it's an up and running, fully, fully, um, fully operating, integrated, interoperable managed spectrum cell site. Why can't you walk into Best Buy today, just like you can with Wi-Fi, and buy an LT network? You should be able to. I mean, it's not that hard. It's just software. Go into Best Buy, go, you know, COTS, everyone's talking about COTS. You know, I think COTS stands for cellular off the shelf, right? You should go into Best Buy, you should be able to buy cellular LTE, bring it back to this room here, plug it into the Ethernet LAN, and it's a fully functioning AT&T or Verizon LT cell site. That's called bring your own network, bring your own capacity. You'll never, when it gets shrunk down to that level and distributed everywhere, you always have network capacity. Wherever you go, you'll have network capacity. Air is everywhere and there's spectrum everywhere. Light it up. Why do we have these fixed cell sites everywhere that have literally crappy coverage for everybody and you have to be near one in order to have a good signal and you know, good experience. It needs to be everywhere. But the way that they've engineered the network is you put small cells everywhere, then you've got a backhaul cost problem, right? So I would encourage us when we're talking about virtualization, let's just not keep it in a centralized location. I mean, it's an old hub and spoke architecture. We've evolved since then, right? That's like Alexander Graham Bell, hub and spoke. Let's do distributed. Let's push it out to the edge as far as we can, and that's when, the, that's when I think NFE and SDN will really, really take off. Um, and the, and the, the, the point here is, you know, we should have cellular as a service, mobility as a service. It should be an IT function. Anyone that, you know, can do Wi-Fi today should be able to deploy and manage, buy, deploy, and manage, and operate an LTE network. And when you do that and you start plugging them into any internet connection, you know, the economics will get really down, maybe a dollar per gigabit. So, in summary, um, you know, I kind of call it the distributed effect of mobility, but if you took all the proprietary backhaul technologies, all the carrier core technologies there, and distributed it all the way down to the cell tower for step number one, put it all at the cell tower, plug it into the internet directly, look what happens. You don't have your $10 per gigabit of going all the way through the backhaul network, through the carrier core to go to Netflix and download a Netflix movie. Why do that? Why go, why go through all that to get to Amazon's cloud or Facebook's cloud or YouTube's CDN? Get it right from the cell site. So if you take all this and you virtualize it and shrink it down and run it to the tower, well, guess what? The towers can talk to each other too. So what you're enabling is tower to tower communications and tower right to the internet. But why stop there? You don't have to, I mean, it's software, right? With software, you're allowed to innovate. <laughs> it's not tied to proprietary hardware. So, um, sorry. I had one more slide, but that's okay. Um, so this is network function virtualization software-defined networking. Um, SON is self-organizing networks. So I'll just leave you with this. Where mobility is going is 
Think about cell sites that are no longer physically attached to the ground and they're able to move around. Like it's embedded in your laptop or eventually in your phone. The whole EPC will be eventually embedded like Wi-Fi is today. That's where the industry is going. We're leading that in this conference. So if cell sites are always moving around, it's basically a swarming, self-organizing, ad hoc, peer-to-peer -peer IP wireless network. They talk to one another. You have all of mobility's capabilities, mobility's capabilities, embedded in that moving device. They swarm, they self-organizing, they ad hoc t set up a network and rip it down. And that's you know, what I kind of call the consumerization of managed spectrum. It is going to the point where you don't really need the carrier to deploy LTE. If it's really software and it's really innovative, why not have it in the hands of innova innovation to go deploy these technologies and set up the network? Look at Amazon, for example. I'll pick on them since you know, they're not too far away. Is Amazon, um, you know, why can't they offer cellular as a service? They do software as a service today. They do platform as a service. Why not do um, cellular as a service? They can, they can do it. Why don't, they run in, why don't they run their own network? Why don't they take the software that we're developing in this, in this team here? Why don't they create their own Wi-Fi box and just put, sell them like they do the Kindles so they're everywhere and the Kindles can connect to that and get on the internet? Yeah, they'll have to share spectrum. So basically there's a battle going on now with Amazon, Google, Apple. Like they just want to lease spectrum and, sub, and share spectrum from the carriers, but they can run and operate their own mobile network today. They're already doing it on the wireline side. Why can't they do it on the wireless side? So I hope that's you know, just a little bit of a different view of uh, um, you know, kind of how, to, how the problem we're trying to trawl, solve here, how it gets kind of applied to mobility. Um, and at Lemco, this is what we're really trying to do. Um, we have virtualized the entire EPC. We've distributed it. So we've virtualized it so it runs on any hardware platform. We're getting it to silicon. We've, we'll run it at any radio. So we've, um, we've abstracted the actual radio because the radio is just a commodity radio. It can be a big one or a small one, just a transceiver. And then we've made, enabled the interconnect just to be TCP IP. So it can go right to the internet from that radio. And that's where you have the router and you can actually configure APNs and route certain APNs and PDP contexts different ways. So I hope that's helpful. It gives you a little bit of a different perspective on uh, you know, how what we're building here can apply um, you know, to the industry and hopefully make a big impact. Thank you.